let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everybody to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. We're really excited you're with us today because um, one of my favorite people and banker extraordinaire, Pamela Keefe is with us. Who, Pamela M. Keefe, Vice President, um, Nonprofit Relationship Manager at National Bank of Arizona. And we have with us today, Mario Muz Muzro, oh my gosh. Muzro. Muz yeah, you're, right. you're on the right track. You're on the right track. So. I doubted myself, Mario. I doubted myself. <laughs> Mario is good, and I typically go by Mario. I don't expect people to break their tongues and, and pronounce my words. So thank you for the introduction. Thank you for having us. Oh, my gosh. Well, we're really excited. Yes. It's going to be a lot of fun again. If we haven't met yet, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Jarrett Ransom, the nonprofit nerd, and my trusty co-host is speaking at a conference today in Chicago, and she'll be rejoining us tomorrow. Again, we are here because we have amazing sponsors, and most of these folks have been with us day one. We're now um, 800 plus episodes in on the nonprofit show. And our friends at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, fundraising academy at National University, staffing boutique, nonprofit nerd, and nonprofit tech talk make these episodes possible. So thank you to them. Hey, we have exciting news. We can come to you on your sofa, in your office, on your phone, wherever, because now we have our own new app that the team at the American Nonprofit Academy created for us. It is remarkable. Go ahead and download um, the app. You can simply scan this QR code if you're watching this live or via one of our archives, and we'll get you started. You can also speak into your smart speaker, and we will come up on your TV. It's kind of freaky, but it's true. And then, of course, we are in podcast format. So if you like to consume um, an audio broadcast, you can do that as well. Okay, my friends with the bank. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> <laughs> Pam, let's start with you sure. and, and have you tell us about your journey into nonprofit banking. It's it's not nonprofit banking, it's banking service, serving nonprofits. <laughs> yes. So I have been with National Bank for over 20 years now, 15 of those years I've been in nonprofit banking. And, you know, I love my role, you get to meet so many people, the so many people that have this passion um, for what they do. And there's so many great missions and it's, it's like they're changing the world. And we, as a banker, get to be a part of that. So it's, it's a great relationship with National Bank of Arizona and nonprofit banking. Um, so important to be a part of what they do and um, in our community. Um, they, nonprofits, are the economic engine to our community. Mm -hmm. So very important. And we try and we do different things for nonprofits to really try to help them in so many different levels. So yes, my journey so far has been wonderful. I'm not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> like you said, we've met so many years ago and it's great. You build a lot of great relationships. Yeah, you do. And, uh, I think yeah, you do. Mario, talk to us about your journey on um, being a commercial banker and then working with the nonprofit sector. Um, it's been amazing. It's, it's, it's been a blessing to be part of the nonprofit community. Uh, I started in banking about 20 years ago. I would say to be closer about 18 plus. I uh, was with Wells Fargo for about 17 of those years. And I just made my uh, one of the best moves in my life to, to switch to National Bank of Arizona and work with Pam. Pam has been great. Uh, Pam and I known each other from different time. events. Yeah. Yes, we worked together in different events that we supported uh, uh, similar clients and mm -hmm. it's been a great journey. So I've been uh, assisting nonprofits for about eight years now. Mm -hmm. So the, the best part of my day is coming home and having the feeling that not just that I was able to provide for my family, but also I helped the community directly or indirectly. So that's kind of a win-win. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not just a J-O-B. It's something that I take uh, pride in and day in and day out. And it's it's very um, rewarding. So I, I love it. And um, I serve on the board and I touch so many not different nonprofits, not just my clients, 
Right. Something I have passion for is I have two little girls, so they're in public school, so education and kids that uh, need our assistance are so uh, top of my uh, priorities. Well, let's get into this a little bit more because I want to start off by asking you both, and Pam, I'll start with you. Okay. I got to ask you: Do banks even want nonprofit clients? Because you know we're not always like ahead of the curve when it comes to money and all these things. So yeah. is that even something that's a thing? Yeah, absolutely. Banks want to work with nonprofit organizations on so many different levels. Okay. Um, number one, we created nonprofit banking 15 years ago, 15 plus years ago, and created dedicated accounts for nonprofits, dedicated services, um, we're very mindful of our fees um, for nonprofits. Um, so we offer everything from an account all the way to a 403B for retirement for nonprofits. Um, you know, we bank upwards of 3,000 nonprofits in the state of Arizona. So, and growing, there, we have our work cut out for us, Mario and I. I mean, we have about 16,000 nonprofits in Arizona from A to Z you know, very small to very large. So we want to assist nonprofits in any way that they need help from their accounts to a commercial loan. So yes, absolutely. Banks want to work with nonprofits. So Mario, tell us what some of these instruments are. I mean, Pam mentioned that you have, you have different, um, you know, resources and tools for mm. nonprofits, but I think a lot of times nonprofits don't realize that that there there are lines of credit, there are things that they can secure. Talk to us a little bit about that. Exactly, we do have different products, deposit and credit products that suit the needs of a nonprofit. So the main thing for right now, the big push and the big focus is on the FDIC protection. So a lot of nonprofits, when they get their audit, there is a you know, a sentence or two saying, oh, your money is not safeguarded because you have access of 250000 So what we did as a bank, we wanted to make sure in this, during these turbulent times that we have a solution for our client, that they don't have to go, if they have, for instance, they have a million, they don't have to go to four different banks and open, open four different accounts so they can protect money. It's a lot of work. It's not the best use of their time. So what we do, we are part of the IntraFi. So we are able to open one single account here and place the funds in different banks, but they only get one statement and they're doing only one account opening versus going to four different banks. So they're just one of the solutions that we came up to help our nonprofits. We have a community checking account, which has low requirements. For, for instance, uh, the new uh, nonprofits, they, they don't have a whole lot of funds raised already. So what they do, they start with the you know, minimal amount. So we want to make sure we cater to those too. We're not just looking at the big, in, you know, mature phased uh, nonprofits. So we have that product. We also have a consortium card, which is a commercial card that helps nonprofits exclusively. So what we did, we were able to put all the nonprofits in one bucket to maximize their return, rewards or revenue share, we call it. So that's another product. And uh, last but not least, it's a nonprofit financing. We have a product, it's called tax exempt financing. And for capital projects, uh, two, three or, or more million, uh, we have a product that can help them about roughly about 20% on their interest rate. So if their interest rate is 5%, we can help them out, maybe get it down to four. There's other things with the issuance costs and stuff, but in the long run, that's a great product, and we're very proud to be able to offer that kind of product. So we, we do have, uh, we listen to our clients. That's the f first and foremost, and we get the feedback. Then we go back to our management and say, hey, this is what something that nonprofit needs. So let's try to cater to them, make their life easier. So they are engine, like Pam said, of our economy yeah. So and, and our community is here. So we want to make sure they they stay in existence and they're able to to serve our community so we want a good client but at the same time uh, we, we want them to to be able to survive so pam let me ask you about this because it seems to me that nonprofits are maybe reticent or or even to the other extreme afraid to talk to their banker 
and, and talk to them about issues of finance and actually more than just that checking account, but but more of these strategic pieces. Can you explain that to us? I mean, what it is you see? Absolutely. So I think when um, a nonprofit comes to us, we we not only give them a list of items that we would need in order to process a line of credit or a commercial card, we'll walk through whatever it might be. I mean, it, it it's different for every nonprofit, but I mean, we'll definitely have a discussion with them, a lot of handholding. Um, and our underwriters are mindful as well um, of looking at a nonprofit. Uh, sometimes I think cash flow is an issue, but we work with our nonprofits and a lot of handholding, a lot of discussion. So, um, and aside from that, I think we really try to offer services to let them know we're here for you as a consultant, or if you just want to talk about what does it look like if we were to um, do a commercial loan down the road, purchasing a building or whatever it may be. And so we want to be their partner and that's how we look at it. And as Mario said, um, we're out in the community quite a bit and we just want to offer and create value and whatever that might look like, whether that's educating on what a bank looks for in financials. Um, so it's very important to us that they know that and to take fear out of that equation. Um, because they, we are, we are there as their partner. And um, I think that's a very important, uh, it's very important and it, it differentiates, I think, Mario and I from everyone else because we want them to feel comfortable and to know, you know, what is needed and what we are looking for as a bank. You know, Mario, that's an interesting thing to ask about, you know, when you talk about a relationship and, and working with nonprofits, I hear a lot of nonprofits and I have say, and I've been in this discussion, well, let's go to the bank because um, to get them to sponsor something or to help underwrite or help fund because they have all the money. <laughs> and so yeah. mm -hmm. how do we get a different mindset and to be looking at banks across this country as somebody that we can engage with and I got to ask this blunt question, you know, what are you as a banker looking for in creating a relationship um, with a nonprofit, not just the the banking services, but kind of some of, you know, maybe that that bigger level thinking? What does that look like to you? So honesty, integrity, they come they come first. So we need to have the communication open channel. So we need to talk and set expectations. That's the that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. um, we want to be a trusted partner, like Pam said. Uh, we want to be an uh, integral part of their growth and their success. Mm -hmm. So uh, like Pam mentioned on credit. So as we all know, nonprofits, 501c3, C6, C6 are not owned by owners. It's, mm -hmm. it's a nonprofit that doesn't have owners nor guarantors. So that's something we talk to our clients or prospects and we let them know when it comes to financing, there's different aspects we look at and we educate them. Maybe it's a no today, but it's never a no three years from now. We try to let them know this is what we look for. For instance, cash flow. That's something they look for right now. It doesn't look like you can support the building. That's X amount of money. Maybe we can look at something maybe a little bit cheaper. Or maybe we can work on these numbers and maybe three years from now, maybe we can get to the to the finish line. So I feel like the, the integrity of a banker, also a client and the being, being open, having those open communication channels, I think that's the most important. So uh, uh, it goes both ways. Uh, I, they, we need to be available for our clients mm -hmm. um, and client also. I know they get busy, but they also need to be proactive. Mm -hmm. They need to talk to us. And we need to work together to accomplish our goals. Mm -hmm. So it's a partnership. It's not just a we're a client and we we want to make sure that we support them in different different avenues, like you said, uh, fundraising, uh, community events, and, and different different aspects of their day-to-day uh, uh, -day operations. So we are here to be a partner. So along those lines, um, we have a viewer that's just asked this interesting question, and it's like, do we have to bank? with an organization 
in order to expect financial support from that institution? Yes and no, I would say. So uh, we all look for partnerships. So we both benefit from, from having the relationship, but we do have passion for different type of uh, nonprofits. So for us, we will even support a nonprofit that's not our client. Okay. As long as they're doing, you know, good thing for the community and we are seeing the impact they're making, yeah. we'll definitely support. Mm -hmm. so Pam, you can, Pam's been with the MBAZ for more than I have, so you, you can. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. There's, there's so many different ways um, to work with nonprofits. I know that um, the bank has Taste of the Biltmore. We have it every year um, and we use a nonprofit for, as a benefactor for that event. <laughs> um which that event there's over a thousand that attended last year so it, it's it's getting bigger every year um and so as a bank too, we try to create different channels to add mm -hmm. value to a nonprofit, um whether that be featuring them in our elevate arizona magazine uh, which we do uh, once a quarter uh, we look at nonprofits that we can feature um you know and and then relationships with the media you know, it's like I said, it's all about relationship and it's all about partnership. So I think that's a key component. To um, add to the that. to the answer and the, to address the question more precisely, uh, Taste of the Biltmore is one of the events that we have once a year in October and we, we are inviting everyone to come. It's a fun mm -hmm. party. It's like a block party and all it the is. proceeds go to a nonprofit. Last year was Gabriel's Angels. This year is Circle the City. So Circle the City is not our client. Mm -hmm. But we love their mission, mm -hmm. what they do in the community, helping mm -hmm. uh, uh, homeless individuals with their health issues. So we are donating all the proceeds to uh, a nonprofit that's not our client. So to answer the question. You yeah. know, Pam, talk to us about a, a part of the resource that um, any financial institution has is their leadership and getting board placement from financial institutions is a big thing. How, how does your bank look at that? And, and do you have restrictions or are you welcoming this idea to put your leadership onto boards? Like, cause that can be a little dicey. It's very important. I know all of our executives, including myself and Mario sit on a board or a committee or an advisory council. Um, it is very important um, as part of who we are. And it's just not joining a board or joining a committee and putting on that hat, you know, and, and, and just sitting there not really, um, not really offering much back to the board or the committee or advisory council. So it is very important. And um, so we are very involved in that. And so I, I think a lot of banks are you know, we're here local in Arizona, but I know, you know, across the board, across the country, it is very important. You want to be a part of their mission and it has to, it has to pull at your heart. You can't just join a board just to join a board. Right. I mean, it has to be something that you're passionate about, you know, as a person yeah. and that's first. Yeah. Mario, what do you think? I mean, as a banker, have you ever felt like you were being asked to join a board specifically because you had a banking relationship and the thought was, well, if we get them on our board, we'll get their money. Have, have you encountered that? Mm, I think I have. <laughs> <laughs> that was a softball question because I mean, you know, that's yes. the reality, but so then let's go to the next level. How do you manage that? And it's managing expectations and, and to what you said earlier, communications, but exactly. how have you dealt with that? I provided different uh, support for the organizations, but if I wasn't able, if I didn't have passion for it, I would just, like you said, integrity and honesty is number one. So I will tell them I already have, because I'm on the board already mm -hmm. and I have passion for it. And like Pam said, we want to make sure that the, the the mission aligns with us individually, with the bank, with the community, and we're all benefiting from it. It's not just being on the board to to pull or source some funds uh, or just to be on the board as a banker. Uh, so I, I feel like it has to be a, a joint uh, need and a, a joint effort. Uh, so, yes, I have been asked before and I 
you know, I, I try to be honest and, I, you know, it doesn't, honesty doesn't kill. And I, I feel like people are going to respect you for it even more. Uh, just being not sugarcoating things and just telling how it is and just, uh, but, you know, it, be, be able to provide because all those nonprofits are doing a great job. Even if you don't have a hundred percent passion for it, they're doing something good. So go out, help out. Uh, what we do also here, I uh, try, Pam and I, we try to gather volunteers. So that's something that we do because we feel like it's an uh, uh, untapped potential that we can do here. And we have over a thousand employees, 60 branches, corporate building that host, uh, they host a lot of different events. But we do that as well. We host events for nonprofits. We will go out and Habitat for Humanity will do the walk. We'll go pack salads. For homeless folks so it's 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 many different ways besides sitting on the board sitting on the board is great but there's other things that you can get involved and and help a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. yeah, pam what do you see in that space with your leadership getting involved and the expectation or not even the expectation but the unwritten you know uh, ask that's going to come to your leadership once they join an organization I think um, it happens, yes. So let's just say one of our execs sits on a board or I sit on the board and they expect, you know, you to be um, either donate what you can or be a part of um, a bigger you know, yeah. getting, getting the, the monies, the funds needed for whatever that might be. So that is just a given up front. You know, that is the expectation. Um, that's why I think it's so important as an individual to truly have that passion and not just do it, just to to do it. I mean, it's it's got to be from the heart. And um, yeah, and so with Mario and I too, we have we get to work with all these nonprofits um, and uh, figure out ways that we can help. There's so many different ways, yeah. so many different ways to give back. Um, writing a check is just one. Um, volunteering your time, um, connecting maybe with other like-minded organizations. Um, giving them your center of, center of influences, so maybe a CPA or an attorney that's focused on nonprofits. All of those, um, I think, are just very important, and it helps. It just helps build the relationship, and it helps build trust. You know, um, so Mario and I know you, you're doing that now too. So it's just, uh, it's just who we are. It's something that we do, just inherently. Yeah. We don't have a lot of time left, but I kind of want to end with this question and I, and I love it. It's kind of like a two part question. So the first part is what makes a good co customer and Mario, let's start with you. When you're thinking about the, the nonprofit landscape, mm -hmm. what makes a good customer for not only your institution, but you know, banking systems across the country? Uh, clear expectations, communication channels, number one, that we have a uh, passionate uh, uh, CEO, CFO, and the executive team. We, we, we typically see good standing a nonprofit with the passionate uh, team of leaders. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's, that's, that's a must. Um, to respect the ex our expertise, that I feel like that's a, that's a big part. They need to respect our expertise and our time. Um, I would say willing to spend some resources as well to improve their business. At the end of the day, it's a business they're running. So they need to invest a little bit to get something in return. For instance, I'll give you an example. Right before COVID, I was trying to get all my most of my clients to switch everything to have a ability to do their banking online. Mm -hmm. And it, it did come with the cost. But some costs, for instance, why if you go in a branch, it's about 30, 35 bucks. If you do it from your computer, it's maybe 15 bucks. Mm -hmm. So we said, why don't you have this? Why don't you have the ACH ability? And they were kind of postponing some of them, not all of them. Most of them already had it because they took our lead on it. Mm -hmm. So it was when the COVID hit, it took a little while to get those things implemented. Mm -hmm. So sure. we're going to spend some resources and trust in us as their trusted advisor. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to the first thing trust and, and 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 being open to communication and being open in in our ideas um uh, and again commitment to the relationship i think that's the main thing so we are building here it's it's a partnership right so mm -hmm. so it's a relationship and and i feel like that's where it starts and ends so and fair and flexible 
Come to us, be proactive, come to us. We always tell people and our clients and the CFOs, executives, come to us when you can get credit. Don't wait till you have one bad or two bad years. Build that his history of credit with us before we can uh, uh, move into different things. But that's that's my take on it. You know, so then Pam, on the other side of the desk, what makes a good banker? If we're a nonprofit and we're going out there and we're trying to determine what's going to be the best fit for our organization, mm -hmm. what does that look like? Well, I will say um, National Bank, we're more about relationships than we are about transactions. Um, so I think as a banker, being proactive, being committed, um, being available, all of those are very important. Um, and just just knowing what their needs are and how we can assist and being proactive and like like when uh, COVID hit and we had the PPP loans that we assisted with, we reached out to our clients and said, okay, we this is what we need. This is what's going to happen as, as we were building our system as we went. Yes. And so we helped hundreds and hundreds of nonprofits and, and for-profit businesses with PPP loans. And um, it's just, instead of sitting back and waiting for a customer to call you, it's just being proactive and reaching out to them saying, this is what's going to happen. And this is our timeline. So I think, and I know I would as a customer would appreciate that. And so it's, um, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, you two have been great. It's really been amazing to, you know, get this uh, perspective. I feel like it's somewhat, we have this fear with the banking system in the nonprofit sector. You know, we feel like we got to go out and raise the money and then we can work on our mission and we forget that there are instruments and that there are tools and relationships um, that we can have uh, with our financial institutions. So I appreciate you, you know, sharing some of your thoughts and, and giving us kind of a, a different lens with which to explore this. Again, we've had Pamela M. Keefe, Vice President, Nonprofit Relationship Manager with National Bank of Arizona. Mario Muzrojevic. Muzro Pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> That's so good. I've had challenging names this week, my friend. I really have. Um, Vice President, Commercial Banker of Nonprofit Banking Division, again, also with National Bank of Arizona. Um, it's been really fun to see uh, the two of you engage with us. And also, I'll just say, engage in, in the community with which I live in. Um, you do a lot of work. Pam, again, you and I worked uh, on, we first met on a nonprofit uh, action that was yep. very of historical significance to our state in 2009 and so mm -hmm. it was fun to see your trajectory in our community as a as a nonprofit leader banking leader so thank you ever so well, much thank you julia we so appreciate you um allowing us to be on your show this is yeah. wonderful so thank you Oh my gosh, it's been a lot of fun. Hey everybody, again, I'm Julia Patrick, uh, the CEO of American Nonprofit Academy. Jarrett Ransom, the nonprofit nerd, will be back with us tomorrow. Again, we want to thank our supporters who allow us to have these conversations with super guests like Pam and Mario each and every day. And they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, fundraising academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought, or excuse me, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the, the people that really help us navigate all the things going on in the nonprofit sector, um, which can be a challenge, but very, very exciting. As we like to end every episode, we want to remind ourselves, our viewers, our guests, our listeners, even our sponsors, to stay well so you can do well. Thank you, you two. Go out and do more good work for us.